explain authentication to us without any jargon because we have heard a lot authentication at the core is just that which is called a chain of trust essentially the authentication factors are of three types what we have have had in india for a lot of time is also now being adopted uh, in the western world exactly. it is just not about user convenience it is also about building trust everyone uh, i am ishan today we are here to talk about a subject close to our hearts that is payment authentication rbi recently released a set of new draft guidelines and that has had everyone talk about this subject so we thought we will sit down have a deep dive on the concept of authentication and its relation to payments and how payment authentication is done and then we will use this concepts to unpack on what these guidelines mean for future of payments in our country to break it down further we have with us rishi my dear friend and colleague and he will help us and guide us on what his research says and what uh, it means for us uh, welcome rishi uh, let us start thank you yeah let's start so rishi starting straight away right uh, explain authentication to us without any jargon because we have heard a lot but simplify it yeah so we'll start with an example mm. like today morning when you came into your office yeah there was a friendly guard who let you inside the gate when he let you in that was also authentication there might be a different setup of office where you have to swipe your card against a machine when that machine opens that gate that is also authentication so authentication is establishing the identity of a owner of an asset or anything valuable right mm. so <clears throat> authentication at the core is just that it is just establishing that the person who wants to use this asset is truly the rightful owner of this asset so that seems simple but in complicated processes where there are multiple steps how how does this work right because i i get access to one but Can that allows me access to multiple things. Exactly. How do you balance that? Yeah. So, so there is this very interesting concept that we use a lot, which is called a chain of trust. Which means that you establishing one form of identity can help you establish multiple forms of identity. Okay. Like in a way that today, uh, let's say you are logging into Flipkart. You will do it via Google, right? So you authenticated yourself with Google once, and now in n number of websites. you can authenticate yourself using google so this is called a chain of trust which means that you use a existing chain to form new factors of authentication that you can use in a lot of places and this makes the life very simpler right because yeah. the new form of authentication might be a simpler to access yeah interesting this chain of trust is something that is used behind the scenes but as users we take it by default right right yeah. interesting and if you remember earlier we used to set up so many passwords on yeah. so many websites yeah right? it used to be used to have one button login via google or login via facebook and that has simplified a lot of lives got it so another uh, what say something that discussed a lot in authentication is this thing called mfa or multiple form authentication yeah. and some principles behind it right yeah. i have also read it but if you can uh, throw some light on it what are they how are they relevant that will be helpful yeah yeah so um, let's assume that authentication is as we talked right authentication yeah. all the about identifying the rightful owner of that asset you know let's assume that one of your factor gets compromised or there is risk right so typically that is why we see that you multiply those uh, number of factors and it means that if one factor is compromised your second factor is not get compromised right so it is multiplication so that the risk becomes very low and let's say when you are entering the office there was just one factor of authentication however for making the payment you will have two factors of authentication as the complexity or as the assets value increases the number of authentications we add more number of authentications to minimize the risk and that is called multi factor authentication but what are these factors like how do you decide like okay. is the, is the, are there some principles behind it or there some set in stone things or it could vary yeah, yeah. How, how does it work so, so here there's a very popular framework and you will find it in mdb website essentially the authentication factors are of three types 
it is what you know which means the knowledge factors mm-hmm. it, it includes like passwords pins things like that the second is about who you are mm-hmm. which is the inheritance factor this can be your iris like aadhaar uses iris it can be your biometric and things like that and the third thing is what you have what you have is also called position factor like a sim is what you have so hence you get otps uh, sometimes people you have a google authenticator which when you get six digit codes mm-hmm. so there are these three essential factors of authentication and the guidelines around the world say that you have to use multiple of them to authenticate a user and these are the frameworks in which the factors of authentications are set interesting so three things <coughs> can, can be used in any order knowledge possession inheritance and it could be multifactorial it could be two factor one factor depending upon the value of the asset, asset or whatever you're trying to unlock no in uh, yes got the framework but what about payments then what is so mm. special about payments mm. and why is this thing so relevant to payments like and it would be interesting to know that you know because what i understand from the ecosystem is that india has certain ways in which we authenticate payments west follows a certain paradigm okay. so if you can throw some light on it it would be interesting yeah so um, in in payments you would often see this a very famous term which is fraud versus friction mm-hmm. so we have to understand what is fraud and what is friction mm-hmm. fraud is that let's assume that you are trying to make a payment so the western world uses a concept of a risk based mitigation so means that the authentication is not being used but a risk based framework is used to evaluate that if this person is really the the right to full owner right so Maybe. if this becomes off the chart which means that if risk is misjudged or calculated wrongly it will result into a fraud so this is called a fraud the f- second part is a friction which means that whenever you are trying to authenticate not all the user will be successful because the hardware world and the software world is not perfect it doesn't work according to 100% all the times right there might be factors outside of the control which will lead into drop offs which means that whenever you add a factor of authentication there might be lead into small drop into the funnel which means that a rightful user will not be able to access it so this term of fraud versus friction is very important and that is how uh, the west west has mostly been a risk based uh, system versus india adopted uh, two factor authentication as okay. a very as a, for every payment yeah yeah i think this is uh, we experience every day here uh, mm. in india i have seen that in west also the behavior is very different mm. so uh, where, whereas we in india always enter an otp or even when you are using upi Correct. we enter a pin whereas in the western world a lot of times it was just about entering your card and the transaction yeah, would just go through however uh, what i understand is that that's also evolving you think with new guidelines coming <laughs> yeah. up can you speak a bit more on that sure so uh, the west and primarily the eu Uh, is now has been transforming itself through the last 10 years right and over there they have adopted under the psd2 they have adopted the kind of a secure customer authentication which says that for except from a few exemptions all payments have to be authenticated which means that they are moving away from this space mitigation and they are migrating to actual customer authentication which means that in the eu region also we see concept of rise of the 3vs in cards and in open banking also there are some technologies by which authentication is being done mm-hmm. so <clears throat> these authentication concepts are being um, rapidly being adopted by the eu region as well got it got it so it's interesting that uh, the what we have have had in india for a lot of time is also now being adopted uh, in the western world exactly and uh, that's very interesting and uh, maybe we can use some of the learnings that we have here in uh, there as well right so because you see right in india we had a lot of authentication which means that for cards we always had in uh, cvv and an otp right for when the user is entering the card number mm-hmm. it always comes the cvv and otp for upi you always enter your upi pin on a device which is your own factor so uh in india always had this and due to which there was a lot of friction also but india um uh, adopted these two fa technologies yeah and, and 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 when we think about friction right now the digital economy or payments in india despite whatever friction supposedly mm. has boomed a lot right correct 
I remember we were, what we what we would be doing like one transaction in a week okay. ten years ago towards almost seven transactions a day. Correct. Right, that's the frequency that has increased. So it's not that the friction has uh, been uh, uh, you know not helpful. It's okay. I think in a way it has been helpful for the ecosystem because it is just not about user convenience. It is also about building trust. And in the world of commerce, trust is as important maybe exactly. as users. So, I mean, because today if you go right and you ask anyone in the office or around you know family, they'll always say that payments are being trusted, right? Mm-hmm. It will never happen that without my authorizations, a money can be debited from my account. This is a very foreign concept in India. Yeah. E-commerce economy has gone almost ten times because of that. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely that's something that we have all lived and uh, uh, and uh, seen, right? What do you think, you know, will be the next evolution? And like the big manufacturers like Google and Apple have invested a lot in the actual hardware of the mobile. Almost 95% of the mobiles now carry that. What happens if someone hacks my phone? In return, as a factor, will come inside the merchant payment ecosystem. We see that from our very early um, POCs. Uh, there will be a massive jump in the authentication success rate. This evolution of new factor of authentication will will absolutely bring that friction out of it.